do one of my favorite ones I like to sing if I can keep my voice. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. Sleepless night. When I look around and I think things over, you know my good days outweigh my. Bad days, so I, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low, I can hardly see the road. I ask a question, Lord. I say, Lord, why, why so much pain? He knows what's best for me. He would win my weary eyes. So I'll say, thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't complain. You could ever be. Uh, it's been so good. 
He's been so good. Uh, he's been so good. Uh, he's been so good to me. Uh, he drives all my tears away. He turns my darkness into day. So I'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I won't, I won't, I won't complain. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Mm -hmm. uh, how many excited about Jesus? Amen. Come on, come on. Sometimes you got to praise your way through it. Come on. Sometimes you got to praise your way through it. Come on. I'm going to preach that today. Come on, say, sometimes you got to praise your way through it. Uh, you got to praise your way through it. Say, praise your way through it. Uh, come on, you got to praise your way through it. You got to worship your way through it. Uh, you got to press your way through it. Say, I won't, I won't complain. Come on, 1 Samuel 30 chapter. 1 Samuel 30 chapter. Come on, brother, uh, Minister Barnett. I got about 40 minutes this morning. <laughs> if it's not 12 o'clock is when I say that 12 o'clock is 30 minutes in case you catch what I'll be saying um, 5 minutes to 12 is 35 minutes it's 10 minutes to 12 I got 40 minutes I'm, I'm acting like I'm going to finish preaching at 12.30 y'all know I don't do that though that's, it's, that's what it's an inside thing amen so whatever minutes is on the, on the roster I tell them I got 30 minutes 40 minutes whatever come on amen come on I'm excited about Jesus if y'all don't I've been in church all my life so if y'all don't have fun, you come to church, then don't come. I have fun, so I have fun when I come to worship God, amen? I believe God has a sense of humor, too. He's like, okay, I'm going to let him preach 15, I'm going to let him preach 50. He hollering about 30, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, amen? <laughs> amen, 1 Samuel 30, chapter. Now it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day. The Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and attacked Ziglag and burned it with fire. He had taken captive the women and those who were there from small to great. They did not kill anyone, but carried them, carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was burned with fire. And their wives, their sons, their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and his people with them lifted up their voices and wept until they could no more power to weep. And David's two wives, and Anaheim, the, Je the, the Jezreelite, the Jezreelite, Ah, come on, say get out, Pastor. Je Jezreel, Lysis, and Abigail, the widow of Nab Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened, or King James says, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen? Now I want you to go right here and... Go to verse um, eight, verse. Well, I'll just go seven and eight. And then David said to Abathar, the priest, Abimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. I mean, I mean, come on, let, let's pray for a minute. I'm going to give you the title. Father, I thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for being able to speak to your people and give them an account of the word and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think your word is the truth, is the life, Lord God. Your word is the incorruptible seed. When we live without it, we die. Now make your word real that we can relate to it. Let it become relevant. Let the word become rhema, a right now word today. Let the word become radical, change me that I may change my situation. Let a revolution begin in me that may impact my community, my city, and my world. Father, let me speak with clarity. Let me slow down, get my words out right. Let me let my thoughts slow down that the folk may hear and understand what I'm saying. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Come on, say, there is hope for recovery and restoration. Say, there is hope for recovery and restoration. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> David was anointed by God to be king at about 17. David killed Goliath to save his kingdom. Let me say it again. David 
when he went out to fight Goliath, and he was standing, Goliath was nine feet tall, challenging all these people, and everybody was scared. David said, is there not a cause? What he meant by it was that it's a purpose I'm out here for. Come on. Y'all going to let this man take Israel, and I'm the king. They didn't know he was the king. He was already known the king. Saul was there as the king, but they was already the king. When he fought Goliath, he was saving his kingdom. And the Bible says, once he killed Goliath, he had half of the kingdom from Saul, married King David's daughter named Michal, who later he didn't even regard as wife. Because if you notice, in this, in this book, in this chapter right here, she's not even in the list. And Saul took them in to be in his kingdom, to be his minister of music, because Saul was overcome by evil spirits because God had rejected him. David was a worshiper and a warrior and a witness. Let me say it again. David was a, wit a worshiper, a warrior, and a witness. And he would go out and fight, and Saul would try to get him caught up and say, I want you to get 100 foreskins of the Philistines. David came back with 200 whole organs of the Philistines. He just went to get 100 foreskins. And the people start singing, Saul has slain his thousands, but David has slain 10,000. And lo and behold, Saul became envious and jealous of David. And while David played upon the harp, Saul tried to kill David. And David had become soulmates with Saul's son, Jonathan, who Jonathan was supposed to be the king, but David was going to be king. Because if Saul died, Jonathan was supposed to be the king, but David was soulmates with Jonathan. And they made a pact with each other that no matter what happens between Saul and David, they will always be brothers. And so David let, Jonathan let David know, my dad want to kill you. So David ran for his life. And the Bible says, <coughs> excuse me, 400 men joined David in a cave. And all these men were in debt, distress, and discontented. Come on, say life will put you in a place where you might be one or three of these things or all three together. Say in debt, distress, or discontented. You might be all, one of them or all three. You can be just as happy you can be, but you're broke, you're in debt. You cannot be in debt, have all the money, but if you dis no peace, going to say discontent, because discontented. You could have money, but then have distress, because nobody don't like you, or your job, the way you got to keep the money, you got to try to keep working hard, whatever it might be. Going to say debt, distress, and discontented. And they joined themselves to David, and they made them a band, a band of brothers with their wives and children. And God gave David favor in the midst of him running from Saul. So much favor that twice he could have killed Saul. One time he just cut off a piece of his garment. And the other morning he said, hey, hey King Saul, God bless you. I could have killed you, but I love you. Because he said, this is what David said about Saul, touch not God's anointed and do his prophet no harm. Next time he came and stole Saul's cup and spear. Hey, King Saul! And every time Saul would repent and say, oh, I love you, David. Well, David knew better than running back over there. Finally, David got so smart, he started hanging out with the Philistines. His enemies, because see, the enemy, well, how, how does it go with that saying, the enemy of your enemy is my enemy, something like that? How does that go? Huh? Say it again. How does it Tell me. The enemy of your enemy is my friend. Say the enemy of, my, of your enemy is my friend. So he started hanging out with the Philistines. One of the Philistines, he hung out with them, and the guy, we didn't know that David wasn't trying to do nothing to them. Now he wasn't with all the Philistines, but one of the guys. And he hung out with one of those Philistines. They decided to go fight uh, down in, in Jezreel, and David wanted to go and fight with them. And a man brought David on the rear end because they had hundreds of thousands of Philistines going to fight and they brought David on the rear end. And the other, the other Philistine lords look at this man and say, wait a minute, why you got David with you? Because you know David been killing us. He said, don't you know? Look at this verse 7 29. He said, don't you know that they sing Saul slain his thousands but David killed ten thousands? Don't bring David with us because in the middle of the battle David might turn on us and kill us too. And the man says, David, I know you want to go with us. See, David got out of place following the Philistines and left the family and children back at Ziglag. He said, I know you want to go with us, but the rest of the guys don't want you to go because they think you're going to turn on us. 
Go back down to Ziglag and wait till we come back. And that's where we pick up the story. When David gets back to Ziglag, the Amalekites then came by and robbed him clean. Came by and burnt the whole town down, stole all of their stuff and their wives and children. They were violated. Anybody ever felt violated before? Come up. I, I remember I was in college. And a friend of mine graduated and left me a 12-speed racing bike. It was too tall for me to get on, but I have. I'm short. But I climbed up on that bike. It was one of them tall bikes. It was so tall that I couldn't control it right, but the traffic without paying attention. And that's why I got these two front teeth right here, because one day I was going down across the parking lot and lost control of the bike, hit a light pole, flipped over in front of, in front of my face, and broke my two teeth. And, uh, <laughs> You never know, you know, going to the doctor, emergency, root canals, all that kind of stuff, right? But I kept that bicycle in my, bed, in my dorm room every night because I knew it could be stolen. I lived in a, on a place with an 18-story dorm, dorm, and it was, it was in a city uh, where, where the neighborhoods around the college wasn't that good. I kept it there every night, Brother Hal. One night, about a year or so later, I decided to get brave enough to tie, put my, a chain and lock on my bike on a bicycle rack. And Brother Travis was after like a football game or so. I ate my whole pizza and Sprite. I ate a whole pizza and Sprite at about 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, you're young then. I can't do that now, Brother Hal. They're going to put me in the hospital. <laughs> about 20 years old or so. Whole pizza and Sprite. Le ate it every day. I heard the noise downstairs, but wasn't paying attention. In the morning, I woke up. My bicycle was gone. I ain't never seen it since. I felt violated. I done broke my two teeth for the rest of my life. 12 speed bike, nice and all, and then I left it down for one night and they stole my I came. I never found that bicycle. It had to be like a six hundred, seven hundred dollar bike. My friend was a real good, he, he was a really nice bike. I've never seen one like her before since then either. I, I, mean, I, I look up online and I'm like, ooh, I can't buy one like that. But you know what I'm saying, but the issue is I felt violated. You ever been somewhere and look at it and say, look, oh, let me tell one more story. I'm, I'm going to quit. I'm going to talk about myself. I started teaching in North Forest School District. It's right, we're on the edge of North Forest in 2001. I was, I was naive. I taught in Brenham where, you know, the, the, you know, the kids were you know, laid back. Coach football, basketball, and track taught over there, you know, and the other persuasion. The kids are other persuasion, you know what I'm saying? And they, 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 you know, they, they, they fighting over if they make a 97 instead of a 96. You didn't give me like one point for a 97 in this class. You know, that kind of, those kind of kids. But I came to North Forest in an open classroom concept with eight with 120 kids in one area and everybody fighting everywhere. Welcome to the hood, Pastor. I've been teaching in the hood ever since, amen? Title I schools. But I came to North Florida, but out of bird. I was driving a Mercury, a, Mer a, a Mercury Sable, brand new. The church at the Brenham had helped me, to, you know, uh, I was paying for it, but they helped me, you know, get into it and all. And so I was, I, I was just between two churches, but I still had to, they let me, I still the Sable was my Sable. I was driving to work, I was about to move to Houston for the hell. And so I drove all the way from Brenham to North Forest. Left my keys on the desk in the classroom. When all the kids were gone, Pastor Reed couldn't find no keys. Nowhere. I looked high and low, couldn't find no keys. For about an hour, at the call of Sister Riggins, she had to come all the way from Brenham and bring me a second set of keys to get home. Tell them they say violated. I didn't know what happened to my keys. Why? What happened to my keys? It wasn't until 2015 or 2016, 15 years later. I came to ride Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, parade, I mean, um, trail ride. You know, I ride horses now. I mentor these kids. I had three or four kids come out of somebody Hempstead and Prairie View, a couple of them out of Houston, all riding my horses. We riding down, we rode about two hours, sister, and then we stopped by McDonald's to eat. 
I walk up to McDonald's to eat, and lay at the door, say, you, you Mr. Reagan, you Mr. Reagan, the little girl up there, the serving at McDonald's. You Mr. Reagan, because see, I don't change, I'm a grown up, but see, they didn't change, they been in eighth grade then, you know what I'm saying, they don't look, they look different. You Mr. Reagan's, yeah, oh, Mr. Reagan, my brother got you in North Forest. What? He stole your keys and threw them in a the trash can. Can't ever say violated. Fifteen years later, I find out what happened to my keys. He just threw them in the trash can for the heck of it. That's the word I'm gonna use. Heck of it. You know, you know the other word. It's in the Bible. I ain't gonna say it. He just threw it. He threw it. He threw it. Just threw them in the keys. Did the trash can. I didn't find out the fifteen years later. Here's a situation. David is out there trying to make stuff happen and left his backside uncovered. You got to be careful about leaving your backside uncovered. Because the devil never going to fight you in the front. That's why I never, when you put on the hole, oh my God, there's nothing on your back. You know what I'm You got to be able to never leave your backside uncovered. When he came back, say he came back. Found out that he burned the whole city down. Stole everything they own and the wives and children. Didn't kill nobody. Stole everything. And when this happened, pay attention. When this happened, lo and behold, David got the blame. Because they say, David, if you wouldn't been out there trying to run the Philistines, wouldn't have been at home, this wouldn't have happened. And they thought about stoning David. Let me tell you the first thing about say hope. Say there's hope for recovery and restoration. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Nobody was, no, everybody was mad. Everybody wanted to jump on David. David said, I got to get by, come on, you can't wait on Brother Hal to get you ready. Because Brother Hal can get up here and he's going to tell you what him to sing and all that, but you can't wait on Brother Hal sometimes because he ain't going to be around. You can't wait on Brother Travis to tinkle on his keyboard or the organ because he ain't going to be around. You can't wait on Sister Darlene to grab the mic. You can't wait on Pastor Regan to try to hype you up. Sometimes you got to get all by yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord. Your mama Mike Knight can't be there. Mike Knight ain't be living no more. Your daddy Mike can't be there. Your brother and sister don't understand. Your friends want to throw you away. Your spouse might do like Joe's wife, but you got to encourage, encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes. Tell me, say, encourage yourself. Because when you encourage yourself, King James says encourage. In New King James says he strengthened himself. When you encourage yourself, come and say, my strength is coming on. So when I encourage myself, I'm calling for my strength to come back. I say, encourage, encourage yourself in the Lord. I heard David say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Uh, come on, that's going to say encourage. Say encourage. Uh, say encourage uh, yourself uh, in the Lord. See, when David wrote these psalms, he was writing them for a reason. I believe he wrote this one. That I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praise shall continue to be in my mouth. Uh, my soul shall make it boast in the Lord. Uh, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Uh, let's exalt his name together. I believe I'm preaching better than you shouting. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him were rated. Their faith was not ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord account around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hey, come on, in the fellowship Sunday, ain't you going to taste some good food back there? Say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Say, you got to encourage yourself uh, in the Lord. Uh, tell him, say, praise God. Uh, we don't feel like praising him. Uh, praise him. Say, don't complain. Uh, say, thank you, Lord. Uh, give him a hallelujah when ain't got nothing on the inside of you. Lift your hands uh, when you're weak. Uh, clap your hands uh, when you start crying. Uh, do a dance uh, when you feel like dying. Uh, you got to encourage Encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Say encourage. Say encourage 
Encourage yourself. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't wait till you get to Sunday and try to do it if you ain't going to do it on Monday. Don't wait to get to Sunday and try to do it if you can't do it on Tuesday. Don't wait till Sunday to try to do it if you can't do it when things are going wild on Wednesday. Don't wait till Sunday and try to do it when everything going wrong on Thursday. But when you feel like you want to quit and throw in a towel when everybody talking about you and want to get rid of you, say, you got to encourage yourself uh, in the Lord. I uh, give God some praise because you know why? You can praise Him on credit because He's good for it. You can praise Him when you don't feel like it, praise Him when you don't see it because He's good for it. Oh! Oh! Say, praise Him. Ah. Hey, say, praise Him. Praise Him. Got to excuse me. I ain't got no sleep last night. Say praise him. Oh, say praise him. You got them praise him. Say praise him. Mm. Say you acting crazy today. Say you acting crazy. But say you got to encourage. To encourage yourself in the Lord. Oh, excuse me. I got a sermon to preach. Say encourage him. Say encourage yourself. Hey, say I feel my strength coming on. My legs were getting weak. My arms were tired. My head was hurting. My back wanted to give out. My feet was trying to cry. But I started praising God when I think about the goodness and all he done for me. When I think about the goodness and how he set me free, I want to dance, 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 dance. All night. Come on, say encourage yourself. Say encourage yourself in the Lord. This is war cry. Say, this is a war cry. Say, this is the war cry. Say, we're not, I'm just not making no antics. I'm not just trying to entertain you. I'm not doing this for no show. This is a war, say, war cry. You got to understand how you fight the devil, how you fight your situation. You don't go in there with your head all hanging down, pole mouth, and then wondering and crying and trying to give up. You got to, come on, say, put your head up, huh? put your shoulders square, and tell you, I'm ready, devil. Throw it at me. I'm coming in with my mouth wide open. I'm coming in with my hands in the air. I'm coming in dancing, and I'm going to get what's mine because I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. Give God some praise. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh. Woo. Then David said, now that I praise God and worship him, I'm going to ask God a question. Daniel say, you, come on, Daniel say, you have to have faith in God. Say faith in God. See, I'm talking about hope. Hope includes faith in God. Don't have faith in the system because the system is not always designed for you. Oh, Lord. Oh, 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 come on, come on. The system is not always designed for you. You might be too old. You may be too young. Might not be the right color. You might not be at the right address. Might not have the right money in your pocket. So the stomp, say, don't, say, don't trust the system. Say, trust in God. Don't put faith in your family, because your family going to go all the way as long as they can go. But when they can't go no more, you're out there all by yourself. They'll pray for you, they'll cry with you, they'll try, but they can't do it because they can't go all the way for you. Because they got to go the way, all the way for themselves. You understand what I'm saying? Don't trust friends, because your friend will be here today and your enemy tomorrow. Say, put your faith in God. He said to the priest, say, bring me the ephod. See, David was a king. And a priest. That's why I say he was a witness. See, understand this? He said to the priest, come on, I'm going to get my priesthood right now. I know I'm the king. Because, see, he wasn't even anointed king. He wasn't even on the throne yet. He was anointed king, but running around in the wilderness like he wasn't a king. He said, give me that ephod. Let me talk to God. Tell him, say, I want to have. Say, I want to have a little talk with God. Oh, come on. Stephen wanted to say that. Say, have. Y'all know I'm not religious. Have a little talk with God. Okay, I know you want to religious. Say, just a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> we'll make it. All right. Hey, I said, I feel a little fat prayer river burning. Turn it. I feel a little fire burning. Say, just a little talk with Jesus. Ah, I say, make it all, all right. Say, just have a little talk with Jesus. I had a little talk with God. Amen. Say, have a little talk. Stop Miss Stevie Wonder along with that. Come on, y'all got to come on, come on, come on. Come on, say, it's all the same. Say, have a little talk with God. 
But uh, who I'm talking to is not Allah. Who I'm not talking to is not Buddha. Who I'm talking to is not Joseph Smith. Who I'm not talking to is not Harry Christian. I want to have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right. Say, have a little talk with Jesus. He said, Father, he said, I said, should I pursue them? Should I pursue them? Because he already, see, already he was out of place when they got stolen. So he won't know, should I stay here or should I follow? And God said, pursue them, for you shall recover it all. Come on, say, come on, say, I got to get encouraged. So I got to get encouraged to have courage. So I got to get encouraged to have courage. God said, don't you be scared now. Say, don't get scared now. Say, don't get scared now. Come on, East Texas. Don't get scared now. Say, don't get scared now. Someone say, you got to get some courage. Say, get some courage. God, not give the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Say, don't get scared now. He said, I want you to pursue. Say, pursue. Because you shall, say, you shall recover them all. Say, faith without works. Say, faith without works is dead. Faith without, you can pray all night long, but you got to get up in the morning and do something about it. Say, pray all night long. Get up in the morning and do something about it. Say, pray all day long. But get out there tonight and do something about it. Say, you can pray all week long, but next week you better get to work and say, faith without works is dead. Lord, I need a job. Lord, I need a job. Pray all day for a job. And you get up and put them on job interviews and resumes. And get yourself together. Put your good little suit on. And get yourself there. Go up there and interview with somebody and say, I want a job. Oh, go hear me. Oh, God, I need some money. I need some money. You can pray all day long, but you better go find out how to make some money, borrow some money, do something. You just can't pray about it. They God gonna drop it from the sky. Tell them say, faith without works is dead. Oh, I want my body to be healed. My body to be healed. Well, you better go see the doctor. Pray about it, because the doctor got the medicine, but God got the healing. Tell them say, you got to get to work and say, get to work. And you shall say, you shall recover it all. Say, faith without works is dead. Lord, I want my children to do better. Well, after you finish praying about it, put something on their backside and then put them to tutorials or do something and get some help for them. And whatever else you need to do, come and say, you shall recover it all. Y'all know what I mean by on the backside, huh? Yeah. They don't want you to do that no more. That's why I'll catch kids acting a fool. Come on, say, you shall, they, you shall recover it all. Faith without works is dead. Yes. And so they started, so they started chasing them. When they start chasing him, he had 600 men with him. But 200 of them got tired. They been running too hard. They couldn't go no longer. David said, stay here by the brook. The 400 of us are going to keep on going. They kept on going. They found the Egyptian in the field about to die. Tim said, while I'm working, say, while I'm working, say, while I'm working, say, God's already Worked it out. See, while I'm working, God's already worked it out. Pay attention. I talk so fast, but I want you to catch something. While I'm W-O-R-K-I-N-G, say working. God's already W-O-R-K-E-D. Say worked it out. While I'm working, God's already worked it out. He will work it out. Work it out. Y'all know that song. Say work it out. Work it out, work it out, work it out. He will, he will, he will work it out. What happened, Pastor? God knew they were coming for him, and the, the Egyptian man got sick. He was one of the servants of one of the army captains of the Amalekites. And he was sick, and they said, well, you can't run with us. You got to stay back in the field. They left him back to die. He had ate for three days and three nights. Bottle to David. They gave him some water, fig cakes, some raisins and everything. Got him all well. He said, what happened to you? I was sick, running with the Amalekites. They left me to die in the field. David said, where they at? He said, swear to God that you're not going to turn me over to him and you're not going to kill me. David said, no, no, all I want is my stuff back. He said, I'm going to bring it straight to him. Come on, say, he works and he will work it out. Hey, hey. See, what you can't do for yourself, God's going to do it for you. Let me go back to my analogies. So you got your little suit on, and you're going for the interview. You don't qualify for that job, 
but God done qualified you. You walk on in there, he'll touch the heart of somebody sitting there and say, okay, we don't need you to do the job. We're going to train you to do the job. You got the job. You don't qualify for the loan, but you go there and sit down and say, this is what I need. And the banker say, I usually don't give nobody no money without no credit like this, but for some reason I'm doing it. Say, he will work it out. You show your children acting a fool. You put them on their backside, sit them back to school and say, we should have put them in there, should have put them there. But what we're going to do, we're going to elevate them, put them in the next thing because for some reason, somebody's working on my mind. Say, God uh, will impress somebody for you. Uh, God will step in and cause somebody to give favor to you. God will step in and cause somebody to change their mind for you. Say, he will uh, work it out. Say, God already worked it out. Yeah. Yeah. And no, they came up on those Amalekites. And David did the best thing you do. Say, come on, say, he's a worshiper. Say, worshiper. He's a witness. But now he's a warrior. And when David go to fight, you're not going to win. David and the 400 men whipped them Amalekites. There was thousands of them. They whipped them. Only 400 ran away on camels. That's how many Amalekites were out there. Only the 400 had camels ran away. And David whipped all the rest of them. And then took back his two wives, all the other people's wives, all of their children, everything. Because they was down in the field dancing. The people down there dancing, celebrating, partying. Tell them to say, party over here, party over there. But tell them to say, I come to crash the devil's party. So I showed up, so I came to be a party crasher. I came to crash the devil's party. I'm about to turn things upside down and inside out. I shall recover all till I come to crash the devil. I'm coming to kick him right in the middle of his party. And they took back everything that was stolen and they took everything the people had before they got there. So before they got the zigzag, they had to take a lot of other stuff. And the Bible said this was David's spoil. Tell us I'm going to get back everything that belongs to me and I'm going to get back what none belong to me to her. Everything the devil stole and everything that don't belong to him. Say it belongs. It belongs to me because what God has for me it is for me. Say what God say what God has for me. You see it down there brother? They took everything they stole and then he took some more. Say David spore. Say David spore was the same, was more than what he had got, they, they lost. But when they got back to the brook, when there were 200 people there, the 400 went with David, some of them was, was evil, the Bible says. They called them wicked, because they were selfish. Tell them, say, you can't be selfish. Say hope, say hope, and selfishness don't go together. You don't just have hope for yourself, you have to have hope for everybody else. Say, my hope is not just for myself. Come on, United Covenant of Hope. Huh? Tell me, tell me, our hope is not just for us. Uh, our hope is for this whole neighborhood. Uh, our hope is for City Gas. Uh, our hope is for North Forest. Uh, our hope is for Cashmere Garden. Uh, our hope is for Fifth Ward. Uh, our hope is for Harris County. Our hope is for Chambers County. Our hope is for Fort Bend County. Our hope is for, come on, our hope is for everything around us. Uh, Montgomery County. Our hope is for Texas. Uh, our hope is for the United States. Uh, our hope is for the world. Uh, we ain't just got it for ourselves. We got to get it for everybody else. Say, my hope is for everybody. They say, what about these 200 that were too tired to run? David said, let me tell you what. Brothers, they was coming with y'all that couldn't make it. Y'all don't keep it for yourself. Give it to them too. They were coming. They had a mind to go. They said, charge it to my heart. Charge it to my, my, my head and not my heart. Right? And then I said, you know, so that, you know they, 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 they wanted to go. They had a heart to go, but they just was too weak. When you start, say, when I bless somebody else, say, when I bless somebody else, say, God going to bless me too. He said, give, <laughs> give, excuse me, give it to them too. And they said, from then on, it was always established that no matter what happened, when you went out to war, if somebody fell on the wayside, when you come back, you give them their portion too. Oh, God said, good God Almighty. Say, Pastor, what happens if I get too tired? What happens if I'm too weak, I can't go no farther? What happens if you got to leave me behind? Say, don't, say, just stay right there, baby. We're coming back. We're going to take care of you. Say, we're going to come back? Say, we're going to come back and take care of them. Let me make it plain. Some people in our neighborhood, they're not going to get no help until we give them help. 
We go and get it, and then they're still addicted to drugs. Come on, say, we're coming for you, baby. We go and get it, and they still got three babies by, by three different men, and they don't know how to fix their life together, and they on welfare, and they're hurting and everything. We got to go and help them. Say, help them. We can't talk them down. Oh, no, you fell by the wayside. Say, go get them. We can't. With they, hey, they trying to go, but they done alcohol and took over their life. Say, we got to reach down and get them. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. We trying to get them, but they got the spirit of lack and poverty. They didn't see five generations of it, so they don't know how to get out of debt. When we can get ourselves out of debt, go back and help them. Tell them, say, we shouldn't throw them away. Come say, there's hope for everybody. If we can bring hope to them to recover. Say, it's our job to go back to the one that's weak and help them too. Say, come on, we shall. Say, we shall recover and restore. Say, there's hope for recovery and restoration. See, they got restored. Those people got restored, too. They couldn't recover, but they got restored. Yeah. Come on, say, they couldn't recover. Say, but they, come on, say, tell them, say, they were. Say, they were restored. And then from then on, it was always established that no matter who went out to fight, that when you got the spoil from the enemies, you come back and brought it to everybody. Say, everybody. Got a piece of the pie. Say, everybody. Got a piece of the pie. Say, moving on up. How'd that song go? Come on, finally got a deluxe. Come on, got a piece of the pie. Got a deluxe apartment in the sky. Come on, say, come on, everybody. Say, everybody. Come move on up. Come on to the east side. The du deluxe apartment in the sky. Move on up. I finally got a piece of the piece of the pie. So, so everybody, say, everybody get a piece of the pie. Y'all got some pie back there? I don't know what they got back there, but hell. Yeah, but hell said, yeah, I got some pie back there. Yeah, I like my sweet potato pie when I bring it. Amen. I know I'm off the subject. Say, everybody, get a piece of the pie. I was studying, and I like the Psalm 34 to go with this. But you know what? The, my cross reference told me Psalm 18 with what David really focus on when he was about to go get his stuff. Tell him something, go and get my stuff. Tell him something, go and get my stuff. When you look at Psalm 18, verse 20, they say, for you will light my lamp. Say, so you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Come say, it was a dark night. Say, dark night. Everything was gone. Anybody been sitting in darkness crying? Lord, everything I had is gone. Everything I worked for got gone. Say, the Lord will light my lamp. He will enlighten my darkness. For by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, by you I can run against you. By my God, I can leap, say leap, over the wall. As my God, the way is perfect, the word of the Lord is proven to shield all who trust in him. For who is the God except our God? Who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of the deer. He set me on the high places. He teaches my hand to make war. So my arms can bend a bow to bronze. Tell him, say, by my God, I can run through a troop. And I can leap, say leap. Say leap over a wall. Say leap. Good God Almighty. Say over a wall. Come on, say, come on. I, I mean, I mean red. Say, we say we shall recover it all. Say we shall be restored. Say there's hope for recovery and restoration. Uh, Brother Hal, I couldn't let it go. I was I was about to close the sermon in my study. And, and I, 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 God brought me to 695 in the book. We're not going to sing it. I just want to do the words. Forward, forward is the battle cry. Onward, onward, come on. To home and I. We will conquer for the Lord or die. The foes is retreating. Say press. Say press. The battle on. Strengthened by the mighty power of heaven. We shall conquer. We shall conquer. To the raging foe or forward. Say press. The battle on. Forward, forward, never faint or fear. Christ our captain is forever near. Be courageous, full of hope and cheer. With full assurance, they press the battle on. Strengthened by the mighty power of heaven. We shall conquer, huh? we shall conquer. Till the raging foe or far is driven. Say press, say press, the battle on. Forward, forward, put the foe to flight. Uh, we are battling for the truth and right. We shall triumph in Jesus' might. Then do not falter. Press, say press. The battle on, strengthened by the mighty power of heaven. We shall conquer. 
we shall conquer to the raging foe of forest rivers. They press the battle on uh, forward, forward. Uh, uh, there's a crown before. See it shining on heaven's shore. We shall wear it when the conflict's o'er. The prize is waiting. Press the battle on, shredding by the mighty power of heaven. We shall conquer. We shall conquer to the raging foe of forest driven. Tell them say press. The battle is on. Tell them say you got to put the fight to the devil. Quit letting the devil fight you, and you start fighting the devil. I don't like when you have testimony meetings and folks get up to about, oh, I need y'all pray my strength to the Lord. The devil been beat me up all night long. He been doing this and doing that and doing the other. No, 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 no. Say, get up on your feet. Say, I want y'all to pray my strength to the Lord. Then I keep on fighting. I beat me the devil up all night long. I whipped him last night and the night before, and tonight I'm gonna whip him again. I'm gonna press. The battle on. I, I'm gonna press on on my job. I'm gonna press on in my house. I'm gonna press on in the, in the grocery store. I'm gonna press on in the street. I'm gonna press on everywhere. I'm gonna fight, fight, fight till I win this fight. Fight when you don't feel like fighting. Press when you get tired. Press when you wanna quit. Can say we shall recover and restore. There's hope for recovery and restoration. Say press, 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 press the battle on. My legs are tired, but keep on pressing. My arms are weak, but keep on pressing. My back is hurting, but keep on pressing. My heart is heavy, but keep on pressing. My mind, oh Lord, need peace, but keep on pressing. Say press, press, press the battle on. We shall conquer. We shall conquer till a radio fall, a fall is driven. Say press, press, press. The battle on. You ought to give him some praise. Huh? You ought to praise his name. Huh? Lift him up. Huh? This is our war cry. This is our war cry. We shall conquer. We shall conquer till a radio fall, a fall is driven. Press, press, press. The battle on. Come on, give God some praise. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. Say no weapon formed against me shall prosper it won't work God will do said he would do stand by his word he will come through God will do what he said he's going to do. Stand by his word. He will come through. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, yes. He won't work. Say no weapon from against me shall prosper in one word I won't be afraid of the arrow by day the hand of my enemy I won't be afraid of stairs set by the devil Forgot all the words, but I know he will come through for me. Oh, no weapon form against me shall, shall prosper. No, 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 no. It won't work. It won't work. No, that's not one. No, not one. 
got one, one weapon. No, 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 no. Say this, sister, say, there just ain't one. Say, there just ain't one. No, 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 not one. No weapon. No, 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 no. Say this, sister, say, there just ain't one. There just ain't one, no weapon, no, 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 no weapon, no, 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 You lose your job, friends talk away from you, the enemies talk about you like a dirty dog, but God got your back, he's going to hook you up in a minute, come on, he's going to come through for you, yeah, yeah, yeah. There just ain't one, no, 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 not one, no, no, not one, no, not one, oh, no, 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 weapon, no, 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 hey, yeah, come on, I got to get out of here, no weapon for against me, come on, wave your hand, shall prosper, shall prosper, it won't work, come on, say. If one word say no weapon form against me shall, shall prosper. No, no, no. If one word. You understand my voice. You listen to a preacher that's excited about giving God some praise in the midst of trouble and trial and tribulation. How can you do that, preacher? How can you get so loud and be crazy, even sing a little bit off key and give God? Because I know who the winner is. His name is Jesus. He's the champion. He's our champion. Say, so Jesus is our champion. Took the way, the power of death and the grave, sin and everything from the devil and rose with all power in his hand and gives us life and that more abundantly. For the thief has come to steal. Come on kill and destroy. St. John 10 and 10. But you say, I've come here of life and that more abundant. If you don't know Jesus your Savior, here's an opportunity. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead. You will be saved. Pray this prayer. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for a sinner like me. Yes. Satan has come to try to steal and kill and destroy my life, but I thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood on Calvary to save me. And I believe that God raised you from the dead. Jesus, come into my life and save me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. It's just that simple. If you say it, it's sincerity. You're now a believer. Find your Bible teaching church. If you're on this side of town, come to 6555. That's how you say it. I mean, it's only 6555. You let me say that every time. But the sister said the other day, 6555. That's how it's supposed to be 